Welcome back, everyone. Great to be here with you on this Saturday. If you are tuning in live to the show when it debuts, excited to have you. If you want to check out all of the questions that we'll be answering today on the show, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2346. And if you haven't, you may as well pick up my book completely free. Uh, literally, we now pay for the book to be printed. You just pay for the shipping. That's over at stephencabral.com. And you can just go to 2346 for today's show notes. Really looking forward to getting into today's episode. Just opening up the document right now pulling up the questions. We're going to start, we're going to pick back up on April 11th. And yes, I know we're nowhere near April 11th, uh, but that is basically the lag in time. So we're about, um, what are we about? Yeah, eight, nine weeks or so. Yeah, about nine, 10 weeks behind. And uh, we seem to be keeping pace with that, at least for right now. So I will always continue to answer your questions in the order they come in. If you want them answered sooner, which I'm sure you do, do feel free to ask them right at cabralsupportgroup.com, and you will get pretty much a same-day answer Monday through Friday. All right, let's dive in. First question is from Zoe. Zoe says, hi there, just listen to your episode on how to cure constipation. As I am constipated right now, you mentioned that you would recommend an international cleanse. I didn't see the brand in the show notes. Could you please tell me which brand you recommend for that? Also, I've already purchased the 21-day detox. Should I do an intestinal cleanse first and then the detox? Or is it okay to just start with the detox? I'm getting my hormonal birth control out on the 22nd, so I was planning on starting the detox on the day of the removal or the next day. Okay, happy to help answer this. This is one of those times for sure. Ask it right at cabralsupportgroup.com. And the reason is that you're, you were beginning all of this like eight weeks ago. So I'm still happy to answer it right now. It does say on that page on Ask a Brawl that your question won't be answered for at least eight weeks. Again, I'd love to be able to answer them sooner. Uh, I'm just not able to right now. Uh, people have been asking. And so uh, I am not, although I'm not able to do one-on-one -on -one consultations, I do oversee the entire Equalife team. And I will be coming out with a text consulting-based um, program. So you'll literally be able, this is, this is, a, this is the first consultation-based paid program I'll be doing uh, in forever. It's been a couple of years because uh, I oversee thousands of appointments every single month with Equal Life. So that's how I feel I can best help people. But I know there's people that want it, like same day answers from me. So I am going to just uh, work with about 30 people. That will come out in the future. Uh, you'll be able to find it at stephencabral.com. But I'm always going to answer your questions right here. So uh, while you're doing the detox, you can do the intestinal cleanse at the same time. Some people do decide to do that, and that is totally acceptable. Nothing wrong with it. You can absolutely do it. And to find the intestinal cleanse that we personally use, that I formulated, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash shop. And in the search box, just type in intestinal cleanse, and it will pop right up. All right? That's a five-day intestinal cleanse. All right, Anonymous is up next. Dr. Brawl, by the time you answer this, I will have completed the CBO protocol and likely be continuing through the CBO, CBO finisher. I'm currently beginning month three of the CBO and have experienced almost zero improvements in my constipation or trapped gas. I've been very diligent and followed the protocol exactly as recommended. I tried the intestinal cleanse on week six and experienced constipation and lack of motility uh, in, in two years. Must say I've had over two years. And I took the binder in four capsules three times a day for five days with only one bowel movement. My question is, if protocol does not provide improvements, where do I go from here? What testing do you recommend? I did the HT main stool testing lead to the CBO. Thank you. Okay. I'm happy to help, you know, without a doubt. Um, so what I recommend is this. If you are having this much constipation, we need to look beyond bacterial imbalances. And I've spoken about this before. So I, I've, I've also said um, this on multiple occasions, but I know, again, I know there's so many podcasts, but definitely check out the course I have on digestion or check out my digestion podcast only. So the course you can find at stephencabral.com forward slash courses and the podcasts, which are completely free, go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and just click on the uh, digestion ones. And, and so you can check on that because for the most part, the only people who do not improve or, or they may relapse after the CBO are people with high levels of stress or low gut motility. That means they have very slow transit time through the 21 feet of small intestine and the five to six feet of large intestine, their colon. 
and the CBO or these things are not meant to speed up that bowel motility. You speed up bowel motility by decreasing stress, improving parasympathetic nervous system response by doing breath work, meditation, visualizations, biofeedback, neurofeedback, um, using nutritional supplements like Adrenal Soothe, uh, calming magnesium, maybe some alkalizing vitamin C, ginger tea, activated B vitamins. So my recommendation is, I mean, all of these things are fixable. You have to understand is like, I, I get it. If you're not getting results right away, I totally understand these things sometimes happen. It's not common, but it still sometimes happens. And that's because you're an individual and individual cases, again, always, as we always say, may vary. So by working with a practitioner, they help you work through the variables. I was just on a call today with um, uh, many of our IHPs, our integrative health practitioners, and I was helping them work through these types of variables, not this exact one, but remember, there's always an answer. You just have to be able to work through these variables, and, and hopefully at least that was helpful to get started. Thank you for writing it. Samantha's up next. Um, Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for all that you do. I would love your insight. I'm a 30-year-old woman from New York. Um, I recently had surgery. I had an allergic reaction to either the anesthesia or to or the intravenous, intravenous antibiotics they gave me during the procedure. I'm seeing an allergist in a few weeks to figure that out. I had dermatitis that spread all over my torso, my chest, my arms, and my back. It was pretty severe. The dermatologist prescribed me a 10-day taper protocol of pregnazone. It was intense. At the time of writing this, I'm done with the pregnazone and the bumps from the allergic reaction are gone, but I'm still so itchy and I'm breaking out in hives. The itchy, itching feels like it's coming from the inside out, if that makes sense. Actually, scratching the area doesn't provide relief. I've been diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome, and I'm listening to your previous podcast about it now. I've also been taking allergy medication and eating a low histamine diet. This combination provides very slight relief. I feel hopeless, and I want to feel like myself again. Thank you for guidance that you, any guidance you may have with gratitude, Samantha. All right, Samantha, happy to help on this as well. So um, I think you're right on both sides of this. So could it be the anesthesia or could it be the intravenous antibiotics? Well, technically it could be both. So let's go through it. So, oh, and first I have to provide my disclaimer. So I'm not here to provide any medical advice, any medical treatment plans, any medical diagnosis, or any medical cures. All right. So we're talking about underlying root cause imbalances. Now, anesthesia can massively disrupt detoxification in both the liver and kidneys. So that's a big factor. So in my opinion, if you're asking me what to do first, I'm saying 21 day functional medicine detox. No doubt about it, like hands down, that's the first thing I do. So that lowers and helps rebalance healthy levels of inflammation, healthy levels of immune response, et cetera. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash detox. Okay, or again, work of course with your local naturopathic doctor or integrative health practitioner, that's absolutely fine as well. I'm just giving you what I would do if someone from my own family had the same issue, okay? So that that helps with faster detoxifying harmful issues with anesthesia. Now, you can also do sauna. You can also um, walk. Like, you can do a lot of other things. You can do rebounding, and you should, right? But I'm just trying to get, like, cut right to the chase because people want results. I've been doing this now 25 years. People don't want slow results. They want fast results, right? That's why I give these recommendations. If you want slow results, well, we can just do it very slowly, right? We can just do things very, very slowly and just do our intermittent fasting and, and we can do um, you know, some smoothies in the morning. We can just do maybe a little bit of sweating through exercise or we can do it fast, right? We can do saunas. We can do uh, the immune immunity protocol. We can do the daily foundation protocol. We can do the 21-day functional medicine detox. You know, we can do it all. And that's for fast results. Okay, now the antibiotics could have caused, no doubt about it, two reactions. One is a Herxheimer reaction, and that might have been what you were dealing with. Herxheimer reaction is a die-off reaction of bacteria in the body. You may not have even known it was there. The second is it could have disrupted the gut microbiome, leading to this histamine-based reaction. All of that's possible. So you seem to be on the right track. I would certainly be doing the... Um, allergy protocol we have at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. Head on over there. It contains Hispro and the alkalizing vitamin C. I definitely recommend starting there. And then the uh, functional medicine detox 21 day at the same time. That's where I would start. And then um, slowly with the sauna if you do that, because they're, again, the, the heat can actually cause a histamine reaction. All right, Stephanie's up next. Stephanie says, hi, Dr. Brawl. You are truly amazing. I love all that you do, and I'm so appreciated for finding Equal Life in these podcasts. You are a blessing. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. That's really nice. 
I had hypothyroidism and Addison's disease for five years. Recently, my doctor discovered that I also have polythemia vera. In your experience, have you ever seen all these diseases be related? I'm trying to find the right direction on how to naturally lower my red, my red blood cell count without having to take blood medication to lower this. Have you worked with patients with polythemia? Vera, I would love any advice on where to begin with this blood disorder. Okay, so again, just I just one more time, I'm going to give my medical disclaimer. I do not uh, treat anything medically, give any medical diagnosis, um, medical cures, medical diagnosis. All right, so for those people looking at polythemia, poly, polycythemia, um, what you want to understand is we're, we're talking about a blood disorder where we increase the blood cells, and namely, we're talking about red blood cells. Um, it can also make the blood thicker. Now, in my Boston practice, I used to actually use an electron microscope, and I would actually take blood inside of my practice, and I would actually look at people's blood under the microscope. And you could see what's called coagulation, or red blood cell rouleau, it's called, and that's kind of the stickiness of the red blood cells. Okay, so if we're talking about low thyroid, Addison's disease, so low metabolic output from the thyroid hormone, right? Right? Addison's disease, low cortisol output. And now we have this thickening of the red blood cells or hypercoagulation or extra red blood cells being reproduced. Okay. So we can look at all of these potentially as being connected where, think about this. Um, when the body's metabolism moves at a faster rate, things turn over faster and things move faster and circulate faster through the body. Typically, when you have Addison's disease and low thyroid, there's a lower metabolic rate. There's less circulation. Typically, there's cold hands, there's cold feet. What I would be doing is I would actually be looking at what's the underlying root cause that's causing these factors to potentially happen. So I would be running the big five labs. There's no doubt about it. For something serious, I'm running the big five labs, and I'm looking at heavy metals. I'm looking at nutrient deficiencies, uh, vitamins, minerals, omega-3s, et cetera. I'm looking at gut dysfunction. I'm looking at leaky gut. I'm looking at anything that would cause inflammation in the body. So that's where I would start, Stephanie, and, and hopefully that's a, a good place for you to get started. Those labs are at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. And um, of course, you don't have to run them with us. You can run them with an IHP level two or your local naturopathic doctor. All right, one, two, three, four. And Cassie's up next. Hi, Dr. Paul. Thank you for all that you do for everyone here. I it's I appreciate it's appreciated by so many of us. Thank you, Cassie. I apologize that I can't read today either. Uh, that's funny. I have this anxiety rash that my doctor my doctor's labeled it as, but it happens with any heightened emotion, happy or sad, and when I'm nervous. It starts on my neck and moves to my chest, and when it's really bad, it goes to my arms. Splotches on my face can appear. Sometimes it's triggered. I totally understand. I'm going to read the rest of it, but I've seen this many, many times. So it sometimes triggers um, something by as simple as a customer wanting to compliment me, uh, and I feel it happening. I don't really understand. Or being excited about something. It's not all the time. All right. So let me just give you the answer. So um, the way that this works isn't necessarily through food imbalances or food sensitivities or anything like that. It's an actual switch of the nervous system. So you are feeling the switch. So here's, you said, heightened emotionsness of happiness, of sadness, of nervousness, of anxiety, of feeling uncomfortable, maybe with a compliment, or you feel like people are looking at you. Like I see this, I've seen this a lot in my practice. And so what we're looking at is um, almost what we call dysautonomia, but not from the side that your body can't recover quickly from exercise or things like that. It switches really quickly to that sympathetic nervous system, right? You, you see this dilation of blood, boom, right away at the, skin, at the surface of the skin. And the more heightened it gets, well, the more dilation you see, the more blood flow you see start to come uh, to the uh, skin. So what are we going to do? Well, we need to look at well, there's a few things we need to do. So one is we need to work on the autonomic nervous system. They essentially all hinge around that. So what do we need to know? What we need to know is why are you so, or switching so much to the sympathetic nervous system dominance? So in this case, I would work on both the mind and the body. So for the mind, I would do meditation. I would do breath work. And the reason why I'm mentioning those two is that you are going to become more aware of your autonomic nervous system, and not really the autonomic nervous system, but you're going to be more aware of 
um, at least the peripheral nervous system, the way that your body responds to stress. And you might say, well, it's not really stressful. Well, it's a stressor in the body when you get it ramped up. And so I'm working on both mind and body. Again, binaural beats, meditations. You can find these things for free inside of our Ayubowen by Equal Life app. Uh, what else? I think I think we may even have some breath work in there, or if not, we're going to put some breath work uh, meditations in there or breath work biofeedback in there. Um, so definitely you want to work on that part. Now, the other part would actually be looking at something like adrenal soothe and full spectrum magnesium and things that calm that sympathetic nervous system. So that's a good place to get started. If you were to run one lab, it would be the minerals and metals test. If you were to run two labs, it would be the minerals and metals and then the stress mood and metabolism lab. And if you were to run three, I would do the um, candida metabolic and vitamins test. All right. All right, let's get to one more question. Uh, this one is from Marlene. It says, my blood work showed high B12, but I don't supplement. How is this possible? All right, we've answered this B12 question many, many times. And what I want to share with you is this. Um, there are people also taking liver capsules, um, which again, I'm not against, like beef liver capsules or glandulars or things that might also have high levels of B12. It's one thing to look at. It's not the only thing, but I've mentioned them on other shows. And so we can definitely link up those other shows as well, especially if you even want to ask this right inside of cabralsupportgroup.com. Another factor is that it's showing... So here's the interesting thing, and this is why it's so important. That's why I recommend running methylcobalamin you can run methylcobalamin comes with that candida metabolic and vitamins test that I was telling you about because it shows what vitamin B12 is actually being used. Because if you're taking, if you have high levels of B12 in your blood, it does not mean that it is actually being used. It means it's available, but it doesn't mean that the body's using it unless you run methylcobalamin. So again, this is why I really want people to begin to look deeper in their health, start to look at functional medicine lab testing. It is a game changer. It's a life changer. Um, and then you also uh, want to look at cofactors like, okay, you might have, so that's why like B12 by itself is not as interesting, exciting, especially if you're not taking any supplements because you could say, well, did you have a lot of B12 the other day? Maybe, I mean, maybe, but you want to look at your complete blood count because when you start to look at things like your hematocrit and, and means corporal and, and other ones as well, you can start to say, okay, how oxygenated also are the red blood cells because the red blood cells need I talked about this, I forget when it was. I, I do a, obviously a lot of shows, but um, you need iron, you need uh, magnesium, you need vitamin C, you need copper, you need zinc, you need B12, you need B9, which is folate, you need B6. Like that's how you oxygenate the cells. It's not always just low iron or low copper, it's other cofactors. So, you know, how's the oxygenation of the red blood cells? So, simply saying high B12 without supplementation, yes, typically I would say, well, you might be getting a food-based product that's fortified with B12. Um, you might be eating a high B12-based food, although there's not like a ton, right? And um, so that's that's what I would look at at first. You know, that's how I would look at it first. If you're not taking any supplements, um, that's what I would look at. And then ask the follow-up for sure at cabralsupportgroup.com because I have lots of other podcasts on elevated reasons for uh, uh, other elevated other elevated B12 reasons as well. So hopefully that was helpful. All right. I'm going to practice my reading and I'm going to be back tomorrow answering more of your questions. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. I appreciate you. Have a great rest of the weekend. 